Good morning and welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? That's a question that Jesus asks, and it's a question we can ask too. Our soul is the most important thing that our God has given to us, and He is the one who takes care of it with His Son Jesus. Let's worship Him. We begin our worship this morning with the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 341. We follow the order of worship, service of word and sacrament. It is on page 26 in the very front of the hymnal, page 26. We welcome those who may be worshiping with us from afar this morning. Those in Sitka, Petersburg, Cordova, Kodiak, Prudhoe Bay, Tuluxic, and Bethel, Alaska. Diamond Bar, California, Atoka, Oklahoma. Rodeo, Los Alamos, and Silver City, New Mexico. Lagodi, Indiana. Raymond, Mississippi. Winfield and Concordia, Kansas, welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful 
and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin, you comfort our spirit, you make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your own. Gave him up for us all. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O oh Son of God, eternal Word of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known. You washed us from our Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Please be seated for the scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday of Lent, is recorded in Genesis chapter 28, beginning with the 10th verse. Last week we heard about Abram. This week we are looking at Jacob. And we see that Jacob now receives the same type of blessing that Abraham received. Listen. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. 
Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house, and the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Our psalm song of the day is Be Thou My Vision, and it is uh, in the songbook, which is this book, and it begins on page 18. Our second lesson for this morning takes us to the book of Romans, chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. This is a continuation of our readings from the book of Romans. The Apostle Paul reminds us how we are tied with our Lord and our Savior through His death and through His life. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. 
You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? For if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through His life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here ends our second lesson. Jesus humbled Himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. Out of respect for the Lord's Gospel, please rise. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 8th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with the 31st verse. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that He must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? And What can a man give in exchange for his soul? If, every, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Here ends our Gospel reading. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our sermon hymn, hymn number 389.
Grace, pardon, and everlasting life are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. And if you'd like to follow along, I will give you a moment uh, to open the Bible in the, in the pew in which you're seated. John chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. This may be a very familiar section of Scripture. Um, John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Mary, Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. This is God's word. We bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, as we hear your word this morning, it does take us back to the time, the time when Jesus was here on this earth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Bless your word in our hearts, Lord, for Jesus' sake, amen. Dear friends, Can you imagine what it would have been like? Sometimes I I think that there are times in our lives when we try to imagine what it would be like for a person to live in a different era. Especially children for today have a hard time understanding what it would have been like and must have been like back in the Stone Age when we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have computers, we actually had the old typewriters that were the manual typewriters. Or maybe we had the crank phones. I can still remember having one of those in the house. We try to imagine what it must have been like. Well, as we've been walking with the Lord to the cross this year, we've had an opportunity to to start thinking about what it must have been like to be walking in the sandals of the disciples, to have been there, to have heard Jesus preach and teach and to see His miracles, what an amazing thing it must have been. And perhaps as we are walking with the disciples and we're seeing the miracles of Jesus and hearing Him preach and teach, we may be thinking to ourselves, I wonder if I would have been like the disciple the disciples who fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying and said, watch and pray. I wonder if I would have been like the other disciples who ran and hid when the armed men came and took Jesus away. I often wonder, and perhaps have said to myself, well, there's no way I would have been like Peter and deny the Lord three times. That had to have been horrible, but I would have never done that. Or maybe we say to ourselves, I would not have needed to put my finger in the the print of the nail in Jesus' hands or, or put my hand in His side to believe that He actually rose from the dead bodily. But wondering about that, 
maybe brings us to the realization that if it could happen to the disciples who had witnessed everything that Jesus had done and what He had said and the miracles that He had performed, if it could happen to them, it certainly could happen to us. And so today as we walk with Jesus, as He draws closer to the cross, we observe something else. We see the love of someone that He knew being poured out in an extraordinary way. And we see Him continuing to be prepared to walk to the cross for us. Perhaps as we peek in on this honorary dinner that was being given in Jesus' name, we'll see ourselves sitting there today. May our Lord help us to see ourselves sitting with Jesus and watching not only what Mary did, but also what Jesus would do. If we had been present with Jesus on that evening in Bethany, I wonder if we would have seen the night as really being a time when when it would be our last chance or one of our last chances to give honor and praise to Jesus before He suffered and died on the cross, or whether we would have seen this as just another meal that Jesus was invited to and, and the events of that meal maybe being a waste. Who would have been there? Well, as we hear, Simon, a friend of the family, was throwing a, an honorary dinner for Jesus at Bethany two miles away from Jerusalem. And this took place on the Saturday night right before Palm Sunday. And so Jesus and His disciples had had come south for the Passover. They had been invited to this special meal. And of course the guests, and I'm going to say guests of honor and not just guests of honor, was Jesus and Lazarus. Jesus was there. Lazarus, his dear friend, whom he had raised from the dead, was there. And of course, Martha and Mary, the two sisters, were also there. And a lot of other friends besides the disciples. I can imagine it was a a joyous occasion. And there was probably a lot of laughter because they were all there because Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. They were there to give Him honor to give Him praise, and to enjoy the fellowship of other believers. And I am certain that Martha was there, and she was serving. She was doing what she did best. But this time she wasn't grumbling about Mary. And you may remember, Martha was the one who came to Jesus and made that confession before he raised Lazarus from the dead with the words, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into this world. Martha believed that he was the Messiah. And she was celebrating him as Messiah in the only way and the way that she knew best. She was serving those that she loved. Lazarus was there, of course. And I am certain that he was talking about just how Jesus had changed his life. That's the reason he was still there. And then there was Mary. Mary, who only a couple of weeks before this had run out to meet, or ran out to meet Jesus and said, if you had been here, my brother would still be alive. But now it's different. Now Mary does something that is so out of character that it catches the attention not only of Jesus, but of everyone else that was in that room. We're told that Mary anointed Jesus with some very expensive perfume. Now normally anointing took place with a person who was going to become king, or if we look in the Old Testament, very often when a prophet was anointed to be a prophet, that meant that was the starting point of of their career as a prophet. And normally that perfume or that oil, that scented oil was poured over a person's head and it would run down on their garments and it would be a 
constant reminder of the honor that was given to them and the task that lay ahead. Mary took this bottle of perfume, she broke it, and God's Word tells us it was an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped His feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But not everybody was happy. In fact, when we hear one solitary voice speak up, he seems to be speaking for the rest of the disciples. And of course, it was Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot that you may have noticed as I read the words of the Gospel, that he had been the one that carried the money bag. He was the treasurer of the group. But there's also that side note that he often helped himself to what was ever, whatever was in there. And so the comment that Judas Iscariot makes is already tainted, at least in my mind, because he wanted to get his hands on some of the money that would have come from the selling of this bottle of perfume. Notice he said, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Maybe we would have been tempted if we were there to agree with Judas. A year's wages. Wow. And it was poured out in just a few seconds. Gone. The aroma was in the house. But that was it. By the next morning, you might still catch a hint of that scent, but that would have been about it. And for the other disciples, they probably, and it sounds as if they were nodding their heads in agreement, saying, that's right, you know, that's pretty expensive perfume, and oh, that could have put food in a lot of mouths of people, or it could have helped a lot of people. Instead, it was just broken open and used for one purpose. But Jesus puts them all in their place. Because notice what he says. He says, why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. Mary not only honored Jesus with this anointing, but, but she also showed her great love for him. Yeah, it may have been sold for a year's wages, and yet in a few short moments, Mary poured it out because it was like she was pouring out her heart because she loved Jesus so much. And there was something else that no doubt caught the attention of the disciples. And that was the fact that she took her hair down and she used her hair to dry the oil or sop up some of that oil and that perfume that was on Jesus' feet. Now in Jewish society, for a woman to let her hair down in public would have been a disgrace. But Mary's love trumped that. She did not care if there was any disgrace, because she was doing this out of her love for the Lord. Jesus said, She has done a beautiful thing to me. Mary's love was so great for her Lord, and she was willing to do all of that just for Him. I wonder how many of us, how many of us, without even thinking about it, would follow Mary's example? How many of us would drop a year's wages, the drop of a hat, for something like that. It's probably a hard question for us to answer. And it would be an individual thing that would weigh on our hearts because nobody was asking Mary to do that. Jesus didn't say before the dinner, you know, Mary, it would be a good idea if you cooked that perfume and you did this for me. Jesus didn't say that. It came out of Mary's heart. Would we be willing to drop that kind of change out of love for our Lord? What about $10? What about an hour? Or what about 10 minutes? You know, sometimes the sinful flesh in us is something that, that causes us to think about all the other things that we could use that for. And that sinful flesh in us would 
cause us to stop and to hesitate. What about that? I wonder how many of us would follow the examples of Lazarus, of Martha, and of Mary. And when I think about it, I'd say we all follow their example. We do it in so many different ways in our lives. The ways that we show our love for our Lord, sometimes we don't even think about it as as showing our love for our God. We do it when we help someone. We do it when we carry out the the roles that God has given to us, whether that be a, a mom or a dad, a husband or a wife, a single person. Whether it be the the most intricate project that we have to do at work and doing it out of love for our Lord, or whether sometimes it seems to be the most mundane tasks like sweeping the floor or taking out the garbage or changing a diaper, we may not look at that as being showing love for our Savior and love for our Lord, but believe me, it is. This is a way that we show our love to our God by the little things that we do and the big things that we do out of love for Him with the calling that He's given to us. We honor Jesus by caring for our children, by going to work and putting in an honest day's work and an ethical day at work. Or Maybe it's just by being a good spouse or a good child. Those are ways in which we show our love for our Lord just like Lazarus just like Martha, and especially just like Mary. You know, the one thing that Lazarus, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary had in common was a love for Jesus, their Savior, and they showed that love with the gifts that they had. And I think that's why it's so important that we try to figure out what are the gifts that God has given to me? What kind of things has He put into my hands that He and into my heart that He wants me to use. And for every one of us, it's different. There is not a one of us that is the same. We have all been given different gifts, talents, and abilities. And like Lazarus and Martha and Mary, God wants us to show our love for Him by using those. It was easy for Lazarus and his sisters to honor Jesus with acts of love because of everything Jesus had done for them. And wow, if we were in their shoes, I think we would say, oh my goodness, how can we ever do enough to show our love for our Lord because of what He's done? But our situations are no different. When we hear what He has done for us through His Word, what an opportunity for us to to give thanks and praise to God knowing that He's taken away our sins as far as the east is from the west. And His love continues as high as the heavens are above the earth for us every day of our lives. When we join Jesus and His disciples in Bethany, we learn that we have plenty of reasons and ways to honor Jesus with acts of love. That's especially true when we look at the reason why Jesus was at Bethany. He was there. He was there to prepare for His act of love that was shown to all of us. I can't help but think that as Jesus Jesus received this this gift of love from Mary, um, His response to that was, she's doing this for me. She's preparing for the, the day, the day when God will call Him home. And even though it was a week in advance of that happening, Jesus recognized it for what it was. This was one way that she was showing His love for Him, but it was also looking forward in time to the act of love, the greatest act of love that Jesus would do for all people of all time. Jesus said, It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. No one else would be able to do what Mary did. You might remember that after Jesus suffered and died on the cross, 
Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were the ones who lovingly took that body down from the cross and hastily put some of the burial preparations on his body before they laid him in the tomb. But when the women came out on Easter morning, they were going to take care of the rest of the job. They were going to do everything that needed to be done according to their customs, their traditions. But they didn't find anyone there. They never had a chance because Jesus had risen from the dead. Mary had that opportunity. And Jesus recognized it for what it was. Even though it was a year's wages, He said, this is a wonderful blessing that this woman is giving me. Jesus looked forward in time and He realized that that in a few short days, all of the things He had been telling His disciples that were going to happen was going to happen. It would happen. They would march into Jerusalem the next day. Jesus would be on the back of a donkey and He would be hearing those shouts, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. He would have turned over the tables of the money changers in the temple once more. And He would have taught a couple more days before He celebrated the last Passover with His disciples in the upper room And then they headed to the Garden of Gethsemane. But Jesus would have always been thinking about the gift that Mary gave and how it looked forward in time to the greatest gift that He would give all people of all time. It's interesting that this would be the time when He would be, uh, He was anointed for burial. When the women came on that Easter Sunday morning, He was already gone. The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2 shows what this burial means to us. Paul writes, If we died with Him, we will also live with Him. If we endure, we will also reign with Him. If we disown Him, He will also disown us. There were so many people at the time of Jesus who they disowned Jesus. The chief priests, the scribes, and many others disowned Jesus even though they had heard His teachings They had seen His miracles. They had even witnessed the fact that Lazarus was raised from the dead. But they did not believe. They disowned who Jesus was. But there were so many who didn't disown Him like Judas Iscariot did. Many who trusted in Him and believed in Him. By the grace of God and the power of God, We have claimed Jesus as our own. His death is our death. We die in Him. And what does that mean? If we die in Him, and He has died in us, and He has risen from the dead, so also we will rise someday and be with Him. And as we look at what took place on Easter morning, we recognize that Jesus did not stay in the tomb. That when He appeared to His disciples, and when He appeared to Mary, they knew He was not in the tomb any longer. In fact, He was alive and living. And so His promises to us that were given were promises that are still being fulfilled for us today. Promises where He does tell us He's preparing a place for us. And He'll come back and take us to be with Him. Those were all the things that Jesus was looking forward to as as the sweet aroma filled the room. The sweet aroma of that perfume that, that Mary was using to prepare Him for His burial. But then also that was reminiscent of Jesus being prepared for the one final sacrifice for all time for every one of us. What an opportunity for us to walk with the disciples this morning. We can be thankful that we don't live at that time. Because we are New Testament Christians, we have an opportunity not only to look back in time and to recount what happened, not only in the Old Testament as God's promise of a Messiah was given time and time again, but we can also walk with Jesus and His disciples and see 
the greatest sacrifice of all in His resurrection from the dead. We have the luxury of knowing what happened after Jesus' resurrection and knowing how that Holy Spirit that He gave on the day of Pentecost continues to blow His wind in our hearts and in our lives even to this day. He's put faith in our hearts. And He's caused that faith to grow and produce the fruit of love, His love, or love for Him, that is shown in our lives. And so it is my prayer today that as we think about walking with the disciples, that we don't forget about the love that God has shown to us in His Son Jesus. And that we don't forget about the gift that God gave to us with His Son Jesus. And out of response for that gift, let us, let the love of Christ in us motivate us for gifts of service that He has already prepared in eternity for each one of us to do. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the faith that God has given us according to the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our worship as we bring our offerings to the Lord. We rise for prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, how great is your love for us. You willingly sent your beloved Son to a world of sinful rebels. The innocent one came to serve the guilty, but his own people rejected him 
and his enemies tortured him and put him to death. Because you did not withhold your one and only Son, but let him take our guilt on himself to set us free, we praise your holy name. Dear Son of God, our brother, how great is your love for us. You allowed yourself to be condemned so that we could be declared not guilty. Fill our hearts with the same self-sacrificing love that you showed us. You allowed no suffering, no fear, and no doubt to swerve you from your path to Calvary. Give us the same single-minded dedication and unshakable commitment as we daily take up our cross and follow you. Dear Holy Spirit, how great is your love for us. By word and sacrament you have warmed, warmed and transformed our foolish and stubborn hearts, making us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and receptive to his gospel of forgiveness. Hold his cross before our eyes that we may dedicate our lives to him who died for us. Make us strong in the hour of temptation. Lead us to love and serve our neighbor as unselfishly as Christ did. Amen. We offer special prayers this morning. First of all, a, a prayer for uh, Sherry Beagie's family as her sister Gloria passed away this last week. Um, we pray. O Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank You for all the mercies with which You blessed our fellow believer, Gloria, now fallen asleep. We thank You especially for having brought her to the knowledge of Your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that You would comfort her family and all who mourn her death with Your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest and at last together with us all a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. Amen. We also offer a special prayer this morning for um, Daphne Matz, uh, our teacher out in Tuluxic, and uh, the villagers out there. Uh, for the second time in a couple of months, the uh, the power is out, and they are in danger of, of losing all their food in their freezers. Uh, they've been having problems with their water supply and their sewage. Um, so let's, uh, let's bring a prayer to our God to ask for help. We pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for help on behalf of Daphne and the village of Tuluxic, uh, who are experiencing so many difficulties with their power with their water and their sewage. We ask that you would be with, be with Daphne, especially as she is there. Give her strength. Send your holy angels to be with her, to guard and keep her through this difficult time, always reminding her of your great love for her and for all of those who are in Tuluxic. Be with them, Lord, and help them through this difficult time. We ask for these and all other blessings that you would have them receive from your bountiful hand. In Jesus' name we ask this as we pray the prayer He has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament on page 33. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He made His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We will commune approximately six to eight at each table. Our second table is reserved for those who are worshiping with us from afar. I would ask that you please follow the directions of our ushers. Thank you. And for those who are worshiping with us from afar, take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of your sin. And now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. 
your sins are forgiven. Amen.
rise. We sing Thank the Lord on page 36. the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our final hymn, hymn number 332. Good morning to everyone this morning. Special welcome to our newcomers, visitors, 
We're happy to have you worshiping with us, and we invite you to share a cup of coffee and some refreshments immediately following the service downstairs. And if you haven't as yet signed our guest book, uh, please do so before you leave. It is on the guest register uh, in the entryway. A couple of announcements this morning. First of all, uh, look at uh, this week's schedule. Lenten supper, Wednesday evening, begins at 6 p.m. Worship is at 7. Uh, Women's Bible study is uh, actually suspended until April, uh, and then it will continue on April 10th. Uh, that uh, I think it's the second Friday uh, in April. Um, and uh, one final note, and that is next Sunday, Daylight Savings Time, uh, time starts. So spring ahead, we lose one hour. Um, that, that's always the tough one. The one in the fall is a lot easier to handle. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, the calendar is inserted, and inside of that, there is a recipe collection sheet. And uh, who would like to talk at that or speak about that? Uh, Dawn? Inside the service folder is my email address. If it's a lot easier, it's easier for me if you email it to me. But if not, you can handwrite on there. And on there are instructions and suggestions. And it's going to be categorized, so uh, there's some categories to fill in. If you have any questions, you need or Margaret or any of us in the women's group. Thank and there's no timeline. We well, don't have a set date yet, so just start getting them to me as soon as you can. And there are extra copies of these on the table in the entryway, and you want one per recipe, I guess. Yes, so, one per recipe. Um, so there's a lot out there. Help yourself. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Rachel, thank you for the beautiful music today. God's blessings to you this week.